A great many potters in the ancient Southwest decorated their pottery with reduced iron black paint. Unfortunately, the Indians didn't record how they were doing this. And by the time the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, nobody in the Southwest was painting their pottery with reduced iron black paint. So we're left guessing how they achieved this. One thing I do know from experience, and that is if I paint a pot with red iron paint and I get the fire hot enough, say above 800 degrees Celsius, that red paint will reduce to black naturally in the fire. So the real trick seems to me not in getting that red paint to reduce, but in keeping it from oxidizing as the pot cools. So today I brought this pot out here. This is the one I made to fire at the Southwest Kiln Conference, which of course was rained out. And I'm gonna try to reduce this paint by firing it in this pit, getting it plenty hot, and then covering it with cover sherds and earth to keep the oxygen out while it cools. I'm also bringing this bowl that I fired in a previous video. I'll link that video up in the doobly-doo in case you're interested. I sort of reduced it, although it's not really as black as I'd like. So I'm gonna refire the bowl, and then I'm gonna do what I call pull and smother. I'm gonna actually, while it's hot and fully fired and hopefully reduced, I'm gonna pull the bowl out of the fire, set it on the ground, and try to keep oxygen from reaching the paint on the inside of the bowl. As the fire started to burn down and hadn't reached my desired maximum temperature, I added more wood to it at this point. Seven eighty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven fifty. All right, let me explain what just happened. The pot was really black. I took a couple pictures with my phone because I wasn't sure I was capturing it on this camera, but um, the pot looks really good. It looked black, black, black. So the place where I'd had that bowl kind of leaned up against the jar, when I pulled the bowl out, I left a big hole, you know, that if I just started throwing dirt on there, I was afraid that dirt would start, you know, come right up in contact with the jar and, and make it all dark. When I was setting it all up, I had these cover shirts that I'd made that I brought to fire. And I left one of the cover shirts out because I just didn't have room for all of them in the firing. So I grabbed this cover shirt that wasn't fired and I thought, well, I'll just stick it in there and it'll, you know, at least keep the dirt off the pot. The problem was that that cover shirt, uh, you know, was heating too quickly when I stuck it in there and it just started popping and falling apart. So the cover shirt was going to bits while I was trying to smother it. Uh, and I wanted to get it smothered as quickly as possible because I, I didn't want any oxygen to get in there and, and start turning that black red. So. Um, here I'm trying to smother it. That cover shirt that I stuck in there was just pop, 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 going to pieces. Uh, so 
I stuck some other cover shirts, some smaller ones kind of in the hole, and I think I got it kind of filled in so that the dirt didn't come in on the pot, but we won't know until I open it. Uh, so now, uh, I've just got to wait, you know, a while, maybe, um, maybe an hour or two uh, for this to cool down enough that I can pull the jar out without re-oxidizing that iron paint. Uh, we got to wait for these to cool, then we'll pull them out and we'll see how we did. Okay, this has cooled so that I can even touch it, so uh, it's beyond oxidizing temperature. Let's see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, that is as red as red can be. In fact, it's significantly redder than it was before I fired it the second time. So uh, the pull and smother is not working. All right, let's recap what we learned here today. First of all, pull and smother does not work. That bowl oxidized real good, so must be the oxygen that it gets as I pull it out. Uh, if you're gonna smother it, probably better to smother it in place in the coals. A smother in place obviously works. Uh, this was black when I opened it, or it was blacker when I opened it, and it turned red after I pulled it out. Uh, I hit it with my infrared gun. It was like 150 degrees Celsius when this was literally uh, this was literally turning red. This isn't suited to doing on a day trip out into the country. This is better done on like a camping trip where you can just leave it there for hours overnight and pull it out the next day when it's ice cold because this red will oxidize at pretty darn low temperatures. I'm thinking if you had like a big bucket, like a galvanized tub or something that you could just shove over the top of the whole firing when it was done, uh, that would dissipate heat faster and it might allow you to go home sooner. Um, but, you know, just an idea, and obviously it's not authentic, but it might be one way to do this. Um, you know, I'm not completely dissatisfied with the results, uh, but obviously they're not, it's not as black as I'd like. Before I started smothering it, it was just as black as can be, and I took pictures with my phone to prove it. So, uh, this, this happened after I opened it up. Also, the white it isn't as good as a white as I'd like. It's quite dark, it's got carbon in it all around. And I think that had to do with the environment being fired in that pit, maybe not enough air circulation, maybe I didn't get the temperatures up the way I needed to, or long enough to burn that carbon out. I think if I fired this on the surface, it'd be a lot easier for me to burn that carbon out of there and turn this black. The trouble, of course, is that, again, you have to keep it from oxidizing once you get it reduced, and on the surface, that's more difficult to do. So I'm open to ideas. Go ahead and leave them in the comments if you have some. Uh, some way to keep this from oxidizing once I get it burned off good. Uh, now, Tony Soares uh, texted me with some ideas on this just a couple days ago, and they were real good. Um, Wes at Airstream Wanderings also has some ideas on this. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, I will put a hashtag on this video, hashtag reduced iron paint, and if you go ahead and make a video of your attempt to try to get reduced iron paint, just add the hashtag to that uh, reduced iron paint, and then anybody who's interested in this subject can just go to that hashtag and see all of our videos, which will make it easy if several of us are doing research on the same subject. Let me show you my mug real fast. Okay, um, the mug, again, also has oxidized places, but I'm really happy with a couple of things. First of all, uh, look in this area right here. The black is, that's a good black. I'm super happy with the quality of that black. And the way it gradiates from black to red, you see that on a lot of members' pots. So 
Uh, the gradation right in here between black and red is perfect for members. So uh, even though it's not fully black, uh, I really like it. Again, I've got a lot of carbon in my surface. So uh, this is something I need to try to figure out. I appreciate you coming along with me today as I struggle through this reduced iron paint thing. I'll try again in a future video and see if I can make some improvements. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.